for Curry's Corner with Pat Curry. Hey, Jen. Jen, what about me? And Pete Kent. Sponsored by Bab Ford in Reed City, Wenger Insurance, and Big Rapids Pennzoil and Auto Repair. And also Zot's Bar and Grill here in Big Rapids. Oh, Look at them. Hey, right. Pete and I are Pete and Pat show here. Uh, we forgot we invited these two important people here. Yeah, we did. Well, I don't know if they're important, but they, have some they, inter- they got some information on what's going on in Big Rapids. Uh, okay, I'm Pete, settled now. Uh, Pete likes to uh, be famous for people that he uh, puts in office, and I don't think he put him in office, but he didn't I, hurt I got him. No, I can't hear might have hurt him, though, Pete. Here, I'll turn it up. No, not too loud. Okay, not bad, bad way down. Hey, Pete. Too loud. Do you want to announce the sponsors before we get rolling on this show? Well, we got the Bab Ford. Hey, medication's working. And on you me. want to see Bob Horn the third? There you go. We What's he sell? What kind of cars? I don't you sell? know. Fords. There you go. And number we one sell seller and, after Toyota. And, and we else. have we have Winger Agency. The, the the Winger Agency. Seth Winger. Yeah. That's and right. he's out on Perry Street. and He's in Baldwin. Baldwin, too. Yep, and yes, we all. He's got two locations. Is that right, Pete? Yeah, you got two locations. I just yeah. named them Baldwin, Big Rapids, and the only other one we got is a big one. We got big, 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 big Rapids Pennzoil. No, 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 Zach Man, Zach Man, Zach Wells, ladies and gentlemen, and he's a car hospital. You can anything you need done to your car, you can take care of him. You know, not anything. Not anything. Let me go. Let me go. Not everything, Pete. Not everything. He can. No, wait a minute. No, I know you talk about Zach, but. Pete, when what you say take care of? body, 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 I said car troubles. Yeah, well, that's a body. You that, hit a no, tree, you, you got troubles. You got to do body shop work. You got to go to a body shop. You got to go to a body shop. And who's got a body shop of our sponsors? Well, uh, who's got a body shop? There you Ford. go. Bad Ford's got a body shop. You, you're Very trying to embarrass people. me earlier. Well, this I tell you what, I'm trying to throw you under the bus now. I, I know you are. Done. I know you are. Your old 360 is running pretty good this morning. But then the one other one, uh, we were doing 90 mile an hour, by the way, to try to get here on time. Uh, yeah. <laughs> we got the sheriff here with us. My Mercedes, I punch it. He goes, oh, don't go so fast. I said, hey, Pete, you're Pete. Can't you can get away with almost But we also have a little speedometer. We also have the best hamburger in town. Where is that? Zaz Zaz Bar. And the cold beer. They have nice beers. I like the olive burger, but they have great soup. And we saw Doug this morning, and he's married to Roxanne. Yep, yep. So, our guys out there. And one of the unpaid sponsors, one of the unpaid sponsors, get hooked at Curry's, get hooked. They have. You mean unsponsored? I don't get paid in the You're the one of the unpaid sponsors like me. We don't get paid. But I'll tell you something. If you want to go have a big rig uh, at Curry's, you can have a big rig or you can have a nice cup of coffee or donut right. while you're getting your right. gas. Thanks, uh, it's Thanks. really good. Yeah, yeah, It is, and it's understaffed. Yep, understaffed. And that's the way I can make more So money. let's turn everything over, I think. No, we're not, Pete. We're not we turning over turn. anything. The only thing you're going to turn over is me. <laughs> hey, uh, oh, I don't mean it that way, Bob. Don't get me wrong. I'll we turn we you ain't over. playing that way. <laughs> we ain't going there. Hey, good morning. I got two uh, special guests this morning. Pete and I do. We get Pete and Pat show or Pat and Pete show, whatever you want. Bob, Pat you got your show. name, incorporate your name. How you doing, Bob? You look pretty good. I'm a, I don't have a mic this morning. So. Well, you got a haircut. Why don't you this get morning, a mic? Uh, why don't you get a mic? Why don't you call us in? He's got you a Brian. Can, Brian, hey, you can be the call-in player. Uh, Brian's got his mic. You can be the call-in Brian's player. Brian's got my mic. He, and I, I'm Brian happy who? to relinquish my mic to him. Hey, give it back to Brian. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So anyway, we haven't even introduced them yet. I know I'm going to, though. They're both famous people, and they both put a lot into Bigger Rapids, taking a lot out of it, too, especially Jim over here. But anyway, uh, it's his profession, you know. I mean, Jim's done real well. And, and, well, Jim uh, who? Tell great Jim guy. who. Went to school with him, uh, a little younger than me, so I have a little more knowledge. Not education, but a little more knowledge on the street than he does. I don't but, think so. Uh, I don't no? think so. No. I don't okay, there's so. dispute in the so. studio. Anyway, I got Jim Samuels and Brian Miller. I don't need to introduce either one of them because everybody in town knows them. Uh, they both put their whole life, well, Brian's not done yet. Jim's kind of retired, though, but second uh, second occupation coming up here in his life. So I'm going to let them guys take it over if you don't mind there. Jim, you want to start off? Jim sure, Samuels. Yeah. Happy. Thanks, Thanks for having us. You bet. Yeah, so uh, a couple of years ago... Um, the governor's office invited me to a summit on mental health and, and uh, law enforcement. And uh, I was the only defense attorney invited to that um, summit. Wow. And while I was there, I sat with the head of the uh, Supreme Court Administrator's Office, Judge Milt Mack, great guy. And the, the topic was, how do you deal with mentally ill people on the street? It's a huge problem. I'd like to we know. Need, we, need, we need some solutions that we simply don't have. And so right. 
uh, I stayed at that conference for a couple of days, and then uh, last year I called Judge Mack up, and I said, Judge Mack, i got a little extra time on my hands. How can I help? He said, well, apply to the governor to be appointed to the Mental Health Diversion Council. So I did, and I was appointed to, to, by the governor to the council. And uh, what we're trying to do, what we're trying to accomplish, is come up with ways that mentally ill people don't end up in, in Sheriff Miller's jail when they don't need to. Right. We don't do them any good. Right. And so um, I came back and was talking to the powers that be, and uh, Brian Miller, the new sheriff, and uh, Emily Bongard from Mental Health had already started the process of, of um, coming up with a solution. And before we get to that solution, we should talk a little bit about the problem. Maybe you can let Brian talk about that a little bit, about the law enforcement encountering mentally ill people on the street and what their uh, options were and what their options are now. I'm not putting no light on the situation, but... Uh if I may interrupt, I'm pretty good at interrupting. Well, you're great at it. It's yeah, thank you. It's one of your enduring qualities. World class. Thank you. <laughs> you're a comedian, Jimmy. I love it. Well, anyway, I deal with it every day in that gas station with uh, Brothers Keepers over there. You know, I tell people that uh, we got a mental illness problem here in Big Rapids on the east side. I see it. And and uh, I, my heart goes out to them. I've tried to help them, but uh, I don't know. I'm going to be interested to see what you guys got to say today because uh, it's definitely a problem, Sheriff. Uh, that's not a problem. It's just. Hey, happen. let me just tee up one thing on Brian. Yes, sir. Uh, oh, let me just tee. No. no, no. Let me. He was on the school board with. Him. Oh, who cares? And uh, what a great guy. Uh, you know, he. Uh, we know that. He announced at my house. Uh, he had his first committee meeting at my house. Uh, and uh, I am so proud of him. Him, are bothering me. This he, morning, uh, Bob. he does a great job. It's his first year, and uh, his wife. Uh, he married up. I'm telling you right okay, now. Okay, go ahead, Brian. But so let Brian, yeah, from? Brian, Brian go ahead question. and tell us what you got to tell us. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, where do I go from there? Well, uh, right. So, How great thou art. Uh, this, uh, no, how, I call it a crisis. It hasn't is. just happened overnight. It's been an uh, ongoing problem that has just been uh, enhanced with COVID, people being uh, cooped up social media, the internet, that has just been a, a problem that has uh, worsened the mental health issue that we have in our society. And it's not just Big Rapids, it's, it's nationwide. Um, and what we, I was fortunate when I took office, uh, Emily Bongard through a, a grant through CMH was able to uh, hire an individual that is in our jail through community mental health and meets with our inmates uh, and offers them resources so that when they're released from the jail, they're in a better situation potentially and hopefully than they were when, when they came in through our, into the jail. And uh, that has, in all honesty, been a godsend. He's with us three days a week in the Osceola County Jail, two days a week, meets with the inmates that uh, are in need of mental health and, and counseling and, like I said, offers those resources. And from a personal standpoint, you know, he's so involved that you wouldn't know that he's an employee from an outside agency. He's become one of our own. And, and that says a lot. And I think on those occasions when we have people that are brought in with mental health, we're better, and I think they're better for having John in our jail like he is. And that all goes out to Community Mental Health Central Michigan and Emily Bongard and what they've done to get that in place. You know, historically, years ago when I was prosecutor, I'd sometimes ride with police officers at night and encounter a mentally ill person, and they didn't have any options. They took, him, they took him to the ER, the ER wouldn't keep him, so they end up in jail, and they didn't need to be there. Right. And now the trend is, um, if we can keep them out of jail by referring them to mental health and getting them hooked up, that's great. If they're, in mental, if they're in jail and they're getting out, then let's hook them up with their mental health worker the minute they walk out the door. And it's, 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 it can be very successful. What do they do to them? What, what can change a mental health person? See, I see them every day, and uh, I, I'm trying not to be negative here, but... Uh, it, I'm going to be positive as much as I can. But those poor souls, uh, besides uh, drugs, what, what can we do to them? I mean, they're Well, that, that's they're part of the problem people, with our yeah. society is when you have these people that uh, have mental health issues to begin with, and then that's compounded 
I go back to meth and meth psychosis. Right. Um, it's compounded when these people use these drugs, in this mm -hmm. case, meth. Um, it, it just compounds those problems. In law enforcement today, since I first began over 25 years ago, we're as much psychologists as we are anything in, uh, out in the field today. Mm -hmm. We have to be able to de-escalate, talk to people, talk them down, find these resources. It's not just book them and, you know, or throw them in the car and book them and take them to jail. Um, that's why a lot of the trainings that are being offered in law enforcement uh, are centered around, in today's society, mental health and de-escalation. Right. One of the things that's um, it's a trend that uh, we're working on it on the state level is that uh, we have to decide whether we need to have the SWAT team respond to a situation or a plainclothes officer and a mental health worker dealing with a mentally ill person. And if we can avoid uh, incarcerating somebody, throwing them in jail unnecessarily because they're mentally ill and hooking up with the right, with the right people, that's, you know, that, that's terrific. Yep. But let me just say this. We, there's, a, there's a move uh, statewide that to, to issue these special orders, alternative treatment orders, which basically say to somebody who's charged with a petty crime, look, you do all these things. You, you take your drug, you take your prescribed medication, you meet with your mental health worker, you meet with your DHS person, you do all these things, and 90 days from now, the, the case is going to be dismissed. Well, uh, more, serious, more serious misdemeanors, it could be six months. Now, here's the deal. What happens, that's a win-win for everybody, and here's why, Pat. Uh, because, number one, the person is getting the help that they need to make some positive changes in their life. Number two, Brian Miller doesn't have to deal with an inmate um, who's mentally ill and whose corrections officers aren't trained to deal with them. Um, and so it's a win-win it's a situation for the patient as well, or the, the person who's charged, because they can avoid having a conviction if they get on board with their treatment. And that's the trend, and so that's, if, if we buy into that, we can see a lot less of those issues that you're seeing. Well, that'd be great, because I'm going to tell you a little story. Across the street, I have a young man over there. He's 12, 13. He's been there for two or three years now. And uh, depending what drug they put him on that day, depending what kind of personality or character he's going to be, he comes over there docile sometimes, and just the nicest little boy you ever seen. Next minute, he's over there screaming at his mother, calling him an MNFer and uh, disturbing my uh, store, so I have to go over there and uh, manhandle him, which I don't know if I could anymore, but um, I said to his uncle, I said, what, what's going on with this kid? Now, this is a few years ago, and he goes, well, depending on what drug he goes on, if he goes on this drug, it calms him down, it puts him out, he can't think for himself, he just lays there. And then the other drug, it'll pick him back up again, and, and the combination of the two, if you're lucky enough to get it he's decent but uh he he is under drugs i mean that's his whole life now and he's a meth baby when he was born his brothers are in the same situation they just stay in the house all the time but uh, i um i see him you know and i i really feel bad for him i've tried to help him i have one mental case person i'm working with right now he was in yesterday he's getting a job uh, I, I got him at one job he couldn't take that for two days uh, took him, got him cleaned up, got him out to KC, uh, Kentucky Fried Chicken. That lasts about a week. Uh, Close. And so then I get hard on him. Now I'm, now I'm hard on him. I say, hey, you know, I'm done with you. I'm done with you. I've given you two shots at this. I've, I've given you money to feed you. I've done, got, showered you, you know, blah, blah, housed you. I'm done. He came in yesterday. He said, hey, Pat, I'm starting at so-and-so. I can't remember the place he's starting. I said, better work. Because like I told you, if it doesn't work, I'm done with you. Okay, I think he is going to go. I think that's what he needed, a little discipline. I don't think he's ever had it in his life. I think everybody just give, 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 give. He needs somebody. I, I, I'm not a know-it-all, but I know the public. I know the people, and I've dealt with them for years. I want to go back to say the brother's keeper is needed. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that's not needed for the right people. But for the people that we're getting over there, and I, I can't. I can't say for sure, but what I hear goes on over there, a lot of times it's not good. Why? Because of mental illness. These people aren't all there together. The other thing that bothers me about the programs is that you can do all you want to for 90 days, but if he goes out and kills somebody after he's done with it, where are we going? Where does he end up, Brian? Does he end up in jail, or does he get his hand slapped and say, okay, now you're going to have another... I don't well, mean I think one, rude, one of the things that Jim was talking about is yeah. more petty crimes, right. small, well, you know, local, local misdemeanors, correct. The, the higher uh, misdemeanors. But if you look at these, like this guy that goes down and shoots in Nashville, how many times has he been caught before and they let him back out and then he goes and shoots all these people? I'm sure he's had a history, a track record. When the first time, and you know, my dad said it best. 
When they closed these uh, mental illness homes, he had friends of his that were mentally ill, and so do I. Hell, who knows I might be. But anyway, the Traverse City home up there was a very viable place. They had a little farm there that my uncle, or not my uncle, but my uncle's best friend would go out every day and milk the cows, you know, up in Traverse City. You, you, Mount Pleasant, same place, thing. Right? Mount yeah. Pleasant, same thing. And the state, I think Milligan, that was the governor at the time, I'm not shoving it on him, but I think he was the one that was the governor at the time, said, we're going to put him out in, in, into the communities. Oh, that was Engler. Pardon? It was John Engler. No, it was before his time. Mm -hmm. That they closed it up there? Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, you would know. Yeah. So John Engler. But it doesn't matter. It was a governor, right. and all of a sudden he says, we're going to put him out into the Central Michigan Mental Health. It's going to take care of him. So they started to clear. I remember my dad said, this is not going to be good. These people, they, they're, they're not all there. They're dangerous. And we have to, as a society, address that. And I commend both of you guys for the program that you're undertaking. I hope it works. But I'm going to use Bobby Boucher. Remember him from Morley? Wilmer? Out there talking water boy, Bobby. Boucher. Yeah, well, I call him Bobby Boucher because he had a stigma because anybody would ever say his name was, oh, stay away because he likes fires. He burned houses down. And he was in and out of jail all the time. You were a detective back in the day when he was around, weren't you? He was from Morley. Last name's Wilmer, I think. Probably shouldn't mention names, but. Wilhelm. Probably shouldn't Bobby. mention. Uh, probably shouldn't mention. That's names. why I call him Bobby Boucher. Boucher. He, he was a good guy. I loved the guy. But he was mentally ill. And he couldn't, he, he, he didn't know yeah, how to uh, take the pressures of everyday society. You look at the pressures you've been under over the years, Jim, and you, you probably had times that you could almost crack. I know I have. It's just like, what the heck? Sometimes my employees just drive me nuts. Yeah, Pat. But you then know, I come back to At least he's not talking about you. I'm okay. Yeah, 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 right. So but anyway, Bobby, I felt bad for him. He was in and out of jail all the time. And he'd get beat up. He'd come out with a broken uh, arm. And I really felt bad for him. But he wasn't all there. But we... We used him, just, we didn't help him, I guess. I, one, of the, one of the things that happened when they closed the mental institution is that jails became de facto mental right. institutions. Right. Right. Corrections officers have no training in dealing with the mentally ill. And so no. this trend that we're moving toward is Good. trying to prevent that from happening. Yeah. Um, and some of the things that are going on around the state is they're coming up with these places where the police officer has no place to take this person in the middle of the night. And there's a center where they can take them, and the, the person agrees to stay there all night. They give them some food, they give them some coffee, and in the morning they hook up with their um, mental health worker. Um, and that's working extremely well. Um, Good. One, Good. Of the, one of the sheriffs, uh, the Monroe County Sheriff, Troy Goodenough, uh, came and spoke with our, our group. And he, had, he said, our program, had, we've had almost a 40% reduction in repeat, wow. in repeat mental health uh, people coming to jail. That's 40%. great. 40%. That's great. That's great. Yeah. Sheriff Goodenough yeah. is... Kind of been taking the lead on this actually with our sheriff's association and sheriff good enough does actually an excellent excellent job yes he does we don't have those things available yet in our area and so we have to rely on our mental health facilities that are overbooked themselves don't have a bed and so we'll get these individuals at the emergency room or otherwise and we got to find a bed for them. In the past, it was uh, uh, Ludington. We transport over there. That closed. And now, we've, in the last six months, we've taken two people to Sault Ste. Marie. Wow. And Alpena a couple times. Uh, this past week, we went down to Owasso. Uh, Grand Rapids on a regular basis. But we're making these, because of legislation and a law that says a peace officer has to transport uh, if people are... Uh, Certified and a petition and certified, um, we're forced to do it. You know, we're, we're low staff, and so our men are getting men and women are getting burnt out doing these transports. We're doing one or two a week. Wow. Uh, yeah. You know, and, and so yeah, we're having to deal with it also, and it's something that uh, has hit home enough with me that at a uh, chiefs meeting we had recently, I brought it up to our group to see. What kind of resolution or you know band aid can we put on it until we can get something better in place? Yeah, mental health has been sort of ravaged by a lot of people get with the Omicron, um, you know, COVID. Right. And so they're way understaffed, and their people are getting burned out too because they just have so much to deal with. It. Right. Heart goes out to them. So what's the answer? This program that you're talking well, I mean, about. What this program? This help. program, but is, it, is, it gonna, is it going to be in here in McCosh County? Well, we're working it's in the early stages. Yeah. I mean, you know, Monroe County has it in place. 
Uh, they're probably one of the few, actually, right now. Marquette has Marquette. a really good program. Okay. Pretty expensive. Yeah. What, I, money well, shouldn't be an object, I know, but well, here's where's the, that money coming from? We, we have to have crisis intervention training, and that's expensive. And so, you know, you have to get a police officer to take two weeks off work. Can Brian let one of his officers go for two weeks to, to you know, this training in order to be able to deal with the problem on the street? So that's a problem. Go ahead, Brian. Well, and so... Uh, we received a grant, uh, Macosta County and Osceola County Sheriff's Office applied for a grant through our insurance carrier, MMRMA, uh, for $7,000, I believe, maybe a little bit less, don't quote me. But uh, we did that to train our staff in uh, mental health first aid so that they can then train all the other law enforcement first responders in both Macosta and Osceola County over the course of the next year to two years so that everyone is trained on how to deal with these individuals suffering from uh, m some mental health uh, problems. There's another um, thing that's happening, and this is the nationwide, uh, there's going to be a number like 911 that you call, but it's for mental health crises. And the nice thing about that is um, you're dispatching through that, you know, plainclothes police officers and mental health police officers instead of SWAT teams to deal with some of these situations. And, you know, we've, we've all heard of some tragedies that happened out in Rochester. The family called to say, hey, my, my guy's he's acting out, he's, uh, he's in trouble, come help us out. They're expecting mental health help. Law enforcement shows up, it's dispatched as a dangerous person, and the man ended up getting shot. It was a tragedy. So um, the, the goal is to get the right people there to deal with the mentally ill people on the street. And one of the things that's happening in that regard is uh, I had uh, been doing a little bit of research on how we dispatch folks. And there was a study out of LA that said if the dispatchers are trained in dealing with mentally ill people, they can ask enough questions so that they, dis so that they dispatch the right people to the scene and avoid these tragedies. And uh, I had sent that article on to Megan Erickson, uh, you know, head of our dispatch. And she said, it's funny, we were just talking about that the other day. You know, properly dispatching these officers are going to save their lives and also save some of these citizens. Yeah. In this training that we uh, talked about, this mental health first aid, our dispatchers will be part of that, too. They'll be receiving this training also. Uh, it's, like I said, it's not something that's happened overnight, but I think it's starting to come to more of a head. And when things happen like that, it starts getting the attention it needs. You know, uh, hey Pat, what, yeah. I got just I got to say 103 B1039 WBZX, the all number one new 80s and more. Big Rapids, He's we good, are he? it. He's good. Go. No, I uh, I you know, to me, we uh, the players. biggest savior to anybody's mental health, Bob's, yours, mine, Jim's, Pete's, whoever's out there. Not maybe, mine. Maybe not Pete's. But keep busy. I, I don't mental illness is a crisis, but to me, to correct it, I would say, like, take the airport over here and give them a shovel and say, go shovel the, the um, air, air uh, what the hell, runway. runway. I'm being facetious. But we have city streets that they could be out maybe. Give them a purpose for living, you know what I mean? If you don't have a purpose for living, there, there's no reason. And that's why I try to tell my buddy there that comes in, he's got a little mental illness problem. He, he, he's got some qualities to him. He's not dumb to the world. He's not a dumb person, but he has no cause to live. So he walks the streets, he picks up bottles, he comes in with dirty bottles. I He's 32 clean. years old, by the way. Yeah. I, I tell him, you got to clean those bottles up. I'm not mentioning any names. And, and he will. He'll go back and he'll clean those bottles up and bring them back. So now he, he's being responsible for, his, for whatever he's doing. But that poor guy has no nothing to do. And I, I talked to some people in town here about it. I said, you know, why don't you take these people that, like, like the homeless people, and say, look, we need you. We're going to give you housing. I have no problem with subsidized housing. I think it's great. I've been blessed with what I've had, but a lot of people aren't blessed. So you give them housing, but then now at 8 o'clock in the morning, give them a purpose for life at 8 o'clock, not just to go to bed at night, take a few drugs, go get a beer at Curry's or whatever, and go through life again. I have the same people that buy the same beer the same hour every day and out, but if they had something besides buying that beer, maybe a purpose, maybe a director, maybe the community health person can say, look, go get a shovel and start shoveling driveways. 
do something, or maybe they have to help them get that job. You know, I mean, you know, you take your uh, sheriff's department. I'm rattling on, Brian. Now, quit. You are minute. rattling, but Pat. Like, You're no, rattling. Just a minute. But you look at sheriff's department. You guys give those guys something outside every day, don't you? Yeah. Don't they go outside? Are real badass. Right. But most of them, and I see them out there shoveling snow. <laughs> they're, they're actually enjoying it because they're outside washing the cars or doing something. You know, at least they have a purpose. What's your thoughts on that? Well, I had a different thought, so I'm going to go back to the yep, thought I had. Yeah, I great. Yep. Um, so, a couple of thoughts. Back when I was campaigning, I remember I got a call from a gentleman who uh, was upset, said our society is going to hell, and uh, just and, and he went on to blame our school system as being the reason for that. And I mean, being on the school one. board at the time, I right. kind of got very defensive about it. Uh, you? Uh, I can. <laughs> Uh, I get get pushed sometimes, and so and one of those things was, you know, I was on the school board. Our Big Rapids school system is a, just awesome. I know the other ones in the area are good, and I disagreed. I said the problems that we have is a breakdown in the family structure. Absolutely, that's Absolutely. where we have the problems is Absolutely. that breakdown, single parent homes, and just other uh, things that come into that. That's where we have the problem, and I piggyback on that when talking about keeping people busy. COVID hurt our youth. Yep. I have, a, I have a, a place close to my heart for our youth. I was in the schools, working as a school resource for seven years, best seven years of my life. That's where I think we're going to be having more problems as things move on is because kids were cooped up. They weren't allowed to have those extracurricular activities necessarily. They resorted to uh, getting on their media devices, uh, that, uh, that, that, that was just, I think, a big negative for us as we move forward. Uh, there's a reason why I try to keep my two boys as active as they are. Um, it's because the more busy you are, uh, the less, you, less of a uh, chance you have of kind of going off the, the rails, I guess, a Getting little trouble. bit. Uh, it's not perfect, okay? Um, I had my problems when I was a youth, too. That's part of growing up, learning from that. But then you also have the foundation at home yeah. that teaches you things. But the, you need to keep the, the kids active. Um, whether it's sports, arts, it doesn't matter. Whatever it is, uh, you know, I, we, I use that line, coachable, coachable kids are employable adults. And that could that's go good. for the arts good. And, or that's sports good. otherwise. And I think that's where it, what it comes down to. And, and that's a good point, Brian. I want to uh, yeah. come back to what you were talking about, Pat. And one of the things that happens at our Brothers Keeper is that they're dealing with people experiencing homelessness and housing insecurity. Some of them, a very small percentage, have substance abuse issues. Some of them, a small percentage, have mental health issues. But lots of folks aren't in that boat. And so what the case managers try and do is they hook them up with mental health counselors, they hook them up with substance abuse counselors, they hook them up, uh, they help them find a job at our factories here in Big Rapids, and then they are working really hard to find them housing. And so many of those families experiencing homelessness that go through there ultimately get placed, ultimately get jobs, ultimately get, ultimately get their mental health treatment, and ultimately have a house to stay in. South Worth. Right, exactly, and that's what it does. It, you know, these people are down, destitute, down and out. Can you imagine how devastating it would be to lose your job, lose your house, and suddenly have no place to live? How devastating would that be? And so, you know, this program that they have in trying to build people up um, is effective. It doesn't work with everybody, but it, it works with a significant, significant number of them. I just need to interject here one second and say WBZX Big Rapids, 2 after 9, and here with Pat and Pete and the crew this morning. Well, I'll tell you what, I commend both you guys because you're going after something that really needs to be going after. So I'm not going to... Uh, Dwell on it anymore. Right. Well, no. I, they're, they're taking I think it's they're great. Doing. Somebody's got to do I something. I think, Brian, but I, I are, think, you, are you involved, Jim? In I really think you're involved the, in the okay. one word well, is purpose. Well, two, two people I mean, if we all didn't have a purpose in life... Yeah. What the hell's use? Why why live? And I mean, a mental illness now. I, that's that's a struggle. It's always going to be a struggle. I mean, I commend both of you guys for taking this task on, and I hope it works. Um, I, I think, I, if, and if you go back to it, I think more people than you think are suffering from mental illness. Uh, 
they just have the support, they've learned coping mechanisms, other things uh, where they maybe haven't had that traumatic uh, event in their life that kind of Push them, them over. To push them over. Yeah. I, I, I think that's the case. I, I can tell you without hesitation, Pat, yeah. that in all my years of working as a prosecutor and a lot as a defense attorney, yeah. that at least one-third of my clients were mentally ill. They were? mental illness issues. Oh, yeah, I bet. At least one-third. Sometimes a little yeah. bit higher than that. Well, let's define and mental illness, Jim. Is anxiety can mental be. illness? Can yeah, be. right. Sure. And who doesn't have anxiety? Well, but, but the difference is, I think, within people is down deep is where you were raised. If a kid was off in the head a little bit when he's little and his dad actually disciplined him and said, no, you're not going to do this, I think down deep he holds that within and remembers that as an adult that you've got to be responsible for your actions. I think a lot of times when people come in my gas station right now with their youngsters, they're not disciplined. And they can get away talking that way to the mom and dad. Eventually, they're going to talk to me and you that way. Uh, am I wrong on this, Brian? Or, Jim, what do you, what's your thoughts on little well, kids growing up? you know, up a, lot, and, a lot of those people family. that I represented, represented never had a chance because right. of their family situation. Right, and it's no, exactly. No wonder they're in the trouble know. that they're in. Right. right? And then yeah. we need, if they're mentally ill, we need to work with them, as I said before, to hook them up with their mental health worker, their substance abuse worker, and employment opportunities, that kind of thing. Uh, but some of those yeah. folks never had a chance. And so no. it, it does stem from having a really poor family life. I mean, well, back when I was in high school, I had a problem in ninth grade, and Mr. Williams grabbed me and threw me up against the locker. No, said, you, you know, oh, yeah. I'll you can't you do what, that today, but He called my dad up and said, hey, I accidentally hit your boy in the mouth and it's bleeding. <laughs> my dad said, what side? And he goes, the right. He goes, well, if your mouth's off to you again, hit him on the left. Bob Williams. Bob hung up the phone and looked at me. He goes, your dad's in line with me. I heard him. My dad he was a great man. He was a good Bob, man, but he turned my life around, yeah. and amongst other people. But I'm just saying, back in the day, you respected those guys. Now it's like, oh, you can't touch him, and, and we won't even go there. Yeah, let's not. We well, won't even go there's, there. There's but, a place for you know discipline. Yeah, I, you know, I like sometimes maybe a little bit harder than I should be on my kids, but you discipline them. But I also follow that as I love you, and here's why right. we. You do. I see that. This right. is yeah. Why I did what I did. Yeah. And they don't go to bed without an "I love you." Yeah. Um, that that that's me. Not everybody yeah. has that, and that well, is what it is. That's parental. society. Well, maybe you ought to talk to parents how you raise your kids, because I'm going to tell you what, Brian. I ain't Nobody's sucking perfect, up you. though. No, they're not, and I, you acknowledge that. But the thing of it is, I see kids come to my station. I see your two boys come in, very respectful. You know what the one thing they have every time they come in? You know what it is? A smile. Yeah. You know what a smile represents? What do you, how do you define smile? I love life. I'm, I'm enjoying this. And, it, and then Brian will sit there and discipline him, especially the little guy. And the you little guy, yeah. I just, you want him? <laughs> yeah, I love him. No, I, I love him. You know what he does? He, he understands where his dad's coming from. They mind. They mind. They're very but you know what? Very when he respectful. leaves, he looks at me and gives me a smile. Yeah, very respectful. Because you know what? That, that boy is happy. And even, even though he's getting disciplined, he's still smiling because he knows his dad's right. But it's in him. He's got a little bit of his dad in him. So, yeah. <laughs> this is mother. No. We can go on and on and on. We appreciate you guys doing what you're doing for our community. That's for darn sure. Right, Bob? Well, it all starts with awareness. And, you know, we, we need to educate the public. Um, again, I use that word crisis because I think that's where we're at. Um, but I'm also an optimist. And we can overcome. It just begins with education and then... Uh, different groups working together to find some kind of a resolution and, and, and improve things. Yeah. And, and well, that's I think where it starts. That's where Jim, you come in. I got to commend you, Jim. A lot of lawyers, not a lot. Well, quite a few. Every profession. Once you guys do really well in life here in Big Rapids, they get up and move. Enjoy themselves in sunny Florida or wherever. And I don't, I'm not knocking that, but I'm just saying, Jim, I commend you because you are taking a task on that you really don't have to. You could bury it in the sand out there in Blue Lake say, hey, I got enough money. I'm going to live on my retirement. I worked my butt <laughs> off my whole life and defending whatever I had to do. Done a great job as a prosecutor and a great defender. Um, but you're still here in Macosta County in Big Rapids. That says a lot about your folks, the way you oh, were raised. No question. Put it back. Give back to the community. And, I, and I'm not sucking up to you either. But yeah, you are. Yes, you are. Yes, no, you are. I, the only one I suck up to no, you. No, you are. You well, are. One of the things that we're working on at the state level is uh, to try and get some continuity of um, care 
And um, so that what that involves with the, with the lawyers is typically I'm representing a guy, he's mentally ill, he's been charged with a crime, I'm representing him, on, representing him on the crime. By the same token, probate court wants to commit him because he's mentally ill. That's a different lawyer and a different caseworker. Mm -hmm. I thought you were retired, Jim. Well, I am basically. And so. <laughs> no. <laughs> you said that. Pro, pre, what do they call it? Pro gratis? Pre, what do they call it? <laughs> pro, bono. Pro, bono. pro bono. Yeah. But pro bono. no, I'm, what I'm Not simply saying care. is what we're trying to do now is to say, hey, let's have one point of contact in the system and have that person help through all the systems. There you uh, go. You know, the, the probate court, the criminal court, um, the mental health court, um, substance abuse issues, all of those things. One person. And it's, you don't see that very many places, but that's what the council at the state level is trying to accomplish. Hey, Jim, I got a question for you. Since you, you were a great defender of uh, criminals, what percentage were they mentally ill? All of them? No. I, I think um, probably at least a third of my clients that's all? had mental health issues. Really? So sometimes more. Um, uh -huh. But, I mean, truly identifiable mentally ill. But it must have been hard sometimes because you knew the poor guy was mentally off and we're prosecuting him as a normal guy. It's like, gosh, this guy ain't all there. Yeah. He needs help and we're not giving him. But that's what you're trying to do now. Yeah. That well, that's above our pay grade, Pat. That's well, above our pay grade. One of, the, one of the greatest honors I had uh, in my whole career was representing combat veterans who oh, were yeah. suffer, suffering, PTSD. suffering from PTSD. There you go. And also, some had some brain injuries. There you go. And you know, the the law wanted to throw them up, lock them up, and throw away the key. Right. And so we we worked really, really hard to keep these vets out of jail, out of prison, and to get them the help that they needed. And yeah. um, it's been a, a very gratifying to see so many of these guys once they got hooked up with the mental health system, once they get went to Captain Lovell, uh, the VA hospital, to get over their PTSD or get treatment for it. You never really get over it. Um, then you saw some really amazing things turn around. And uh, I've just been so proud of uh, the dozen or so vets from our area that uh, I've been able to help through that system. I see. They're, I mentally heard, Ill. Yeah. they're mentally ill because of the trauma that I they know. saw and just the things that they had to do. Um, yeah. Yeah. And so there's a, way, there's a way to help these folks, and yeah. it's important that we try. Yeah. One thing that, uh, that I recall from my days back in New York is, uh, and you, people look around and say, why is this like the, the good old days? We never saw these people. They were not there. It was because they were warehoused. They were warehoused in huge uh, mental uh, hospitals. Facilities. And we had them on Long Island. We had uh, several uh, very famous ones, uh, Creedmoor and Kings Park, thousands and thousands and thousands. And if you ever saw one flew over the cuckoo's nest, that was real life. And, that's, and, and a lot worse than that. I mean, Geraldo Rivera, who you see on TV, his first uh, breakthrough was going into a hospital called Willowbrook, which was on Staten Island, and going in and taking cameras and finding patient, hundreds of patients just there in feces and urine, not being looked after, no medication, yep. but they were just like out of sight, out of mind, and that's what we're going to do. And that was the turning point. But it's the balancing act of what do we do? We can't warehouse them. And you really can't turn them out to the community. So what, what is the middle ground there? And that's, that's the important thing, how we treat these people long term. You're right. So, You're right. Well, that's you exactly say? right. You didn't listen. No, I was You were out there thinking about the donuts. I think I it's like anything, airport. though. You know, <laughs> no. There's a place for medication which, and then a paid place for counseling. In a lot of these uh, instances, I don't think you can just have one or the other. I think they need to be hand in hand. Uh, to truly uh, make that no doubt impact. about it, Brian. No doubt about it. But you got to have the experienced people to do it. That's the key. And you're not one of them. I know I'm not. But you know, you know, one thing I, I think about uh, Jim Samuels. Uh, I've known him for 50 years or so. He has always been very active, whether it's artworks, the musicals, uh, whatever it was. And he got around the community. Everybody knew him. And you know, he wasn't. He was. He was not the first one to say, "Boy, you're going to jail." He said, "I'm going to work with you. I'm going to try to make something happen." And uh, just like he said at the start of the show, That's "If so you do sweet. this, we'll do that. If you do that, we'll do this." You're so sweet. And we are so lucky to have a guy well, who's retired. Well, I think he retired to do that. I remember him and his wife walking down the street. And I said, I want to contribute Aww. to your campaign. He said, okay. Aww. I remember that day. He's a doll. <laughs> Pete, but he never paid you, did he? And he I never did. No, he was. Oh, he, oh, 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 oh. he did. He, he paid me quite a bit. Well, I tell you, we're going to go stock market. I, same way with Brian Miller. I think that we got a great share. Gave him $5. And, uh, I think that, yeah. uh, you know, he's going to feel the same way Jim Samuels did. And he's going to evaluate the situation mm -hmm. and take care of it. And 
we're just so blessed to have two people in the community like this. Bro. Yeah, well, we haven't even talked about our sponsors either. And okay, we'll talk going. about Bab 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 Ford and Bob yeah, really. Bob Horn the Third. We're going to talk about. Who else are we going to talk about? Seth Winger, Seth. Winger Agency, Baldwin. Baldwin, and Big Rapids. I know where Two they location, are. Baldwin. And we also have the Big, 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 big Rapids, Ben's Oil, with the Zach Man Wells. Yeah. Yeah. And we also have the Z Z Z Z Z Z Best boy. soup and olive burger in town. And then we pill. go with toll. Now wait a minute. Yeah. Wait a minute. Yeah. Yeah. We got to get. You got to have curries. Yeah. And you got to have that breakfast big rig. Yeah. Told. In the big ring. Mm-hmm. I'm waiting for somebody to call in and say, you know, my my child stutters, and I take offense by what he's doing on the air. So, yeah, right. but I'm, no I know some, intended, as a folks. kid, as a kid, as a kid, oh, no, no. I stuttered. I stuttered as okay. a kid. All right, that's not that's. And a, you overcame that. that. I overcame much it. it, Brian. You, you got any more? To... I I looked at Jim. Uh, you guys done? Anything Thanks. else you can think of? Oh, we could talk about this for Grab weeks, it. but right. I, I think we said we needed to say today. We'll have you back on, though. Yeah. We'd like to have you back yeah, next month. Yeah, that's fun. Follow up on this. Let us know how it's working. Yeah. Well, we, uh, Thanks for caring. We have uh, one, uh, uh, a couple of city officers that have been through mental health first aid to, to be able to train. We have one of our deputies who will be going through either next week or the week following. There's a pastor in town that's going through so that we can begin training our first responders begin doing that in the next wow. uh, month or two. Maybe you can bring them on with you. Uh, yeah, you can bring them on with you. Yeah. Be happy to. Well, you can. We'll have a different we bring, uh, bring Emily we'll with, bring Emily with yeah. us. Because, uh, you know, uh, we're, we're fortunate to have her, Catherine Beagle, and everybody else at Community Mental oh, Health yeah. Central Michigan. Uh, right. We're pretty fortunate, I think, to, to have those individuals yeah, they're, they're fully on board with this program. Right? Oh, I bet. Yeah, they're good people. Well, I guess yeah. we'll thank you guys for coming. Yeah, we'll really. try to see Thanks you on next us. month. That's and uh, Pat, we 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 Pat much, Pedro. yeah we uh, Pat, we made sure that you got a chance to talk. I didn't say much this morning either, Pat. Take a donut, well, Brian. 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 Yeah, Brian. Take well. a donut. You know I will. Take, take a, a donut. Break? Bob, Thanks, guys. Right. Run your ads. Yep. Uh, thank you. I need this. It's quarter, quarter after nine. nine. Give Jim, thank you. And, uh, of course, uh, Sheriff, yeah, Sheriff yeah, Brian Miller, thank you so much for being with us. We'll be back right back. And then, and then, and then, and then, and then, Bat Ford has several openings in its three city location. Currently, they're looking for quality, dependable body shop technicians, as well as top notch detailers. Bab Ford is a great company, and these openings could lead to a long term commitment. So, to apply, simply go to Bab Ford in person during normal business hours. Be a part of the Bab Ford family. Equal opportunity employer. You're busy enough and sometimes your vehicle can't wait to be seen. Thousands of miles over what that little sticker suggests that's not good. With no appointments needed, Big Rapids Pennzoil and Auto Repair can get you in and seen right away. Oil changes, new tires to full auto repair. Big Rapids Pennzoil makes it easy and tops it all off with a free car wash every time. Local service from local people. That's the Big Rapids Pennzoil difference. Pull on in, you'll see. 710 North State Street, Big Rapids. I'm Seth Wenger from Wenger Insurance. For more than 100 years, we've been providing professional service and competitive insurance to West Michigan. Come visit us on Perry Street in Big Rapids or give us a call at 796-0778. We're here for you now and we'll be here when you need us most. 796-0778. Okay, Pat and Pete, back to you. You think Pete works for the post office or something? I don't know. Are we back on, Mike? We're back on, yeah. Hey, I want to say hi to my good, 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 well, good thanks. friend. Well, hi, Dave Baker. Too, Listen, Dave Baker. Yeah. Uh, and I also want to say hi to Trish Aren't and you? Chad, who I play Euchre with, and the Johnstons every week. So that's what I want to say. And Pat, it's so good seeing you this morning. Yeah, you too, Pete. Yeah, I didn't know we had uh, guests coming, but uh, they were so good. Yeah, they were. And we want to make sure we have them back every month. You know what? Uh, we all have differences in this community. And it's sad when somebody uh, speaks ill of somebody, but you really can't spill, speak ill of either one of those guys. They both care. Great guys. A lot. Great guys. And you might have differences with them. But a lot of empathy. If one, You know, like I said, if one for those two boys right there, it wouldn't even come to head. We just go on with life and bury our heads in the sand over the issue. You know, at least they're trying to do something. It works. It's great. It's great. Because I know all I got to say is everybody has a purpose, and that's keeping those guys busy, huh? Pat said, you know, Pat, uh, Brian said it uh, 
Right off the bat, he said it starts at the school, school level. Oh, God, here we go on. No, I'm not going to start with school level. Lord Jesus, Mary, and Joseph, huh? <laughs> you know, I, I guess I could I, uh, I could take about five minutes. I'd like to get mm -hmm. something off my chest. Take okay, with. Uh, I was born in Shanghai, China in 1937. My dad was uh, killed, shot down by the Japanese. Uh, he was with CNAC and uh, Flying Tigers. We evacuated back to the States, and uh, my mother and I, and my mother remarried about when I was about uh, seven, six or seven. And I was unfortunate to have to go to 11 schools in 12 years. 11. And someone asked me at the restaurant the other night, why do you talk about schools? Well, I'm going to tell you a little bit why I'm going to talk about them. I, I got straight D's and F's in schools because I went to so many I didn't know what I was doing. And I, I, I said to myself, man, this is incredible. And... Uh, you know, we have a solid school system. I said, if I get married and have a family, I'm going to stay in one school system. But I went to 11 of them in uh, 12 years, and uh, they gave me a senior year in high school. I was three credits short of graduating. My superintendent used to paddle me once a month, just like uh, Bob Williams did with you. But they gave me the opportunity. They said uh, one thing. They said to me, if you go in service for three years, we'll give you a diploma. Well... The best thing that ever happened to me, I went in the Army for three years, stationed over in France and Germany. Came back, I met, a, I met a wonderful woman, got married when I was 22, 23 years old. Been married 61 years, wow. got four children. And, uh, you know, just all had to work hard like you. You, you, had, uh, you had brothers and sisters, 12, or 12 of them in your family. And uh, you had great parents. You had parents that cared. And uh, I, I was fortunate to have the same thing. But uh, my stepfather was in the oil business, and when I'm talking about oil business, it was, you know, in oil field supply. Didn't make a lot of money, but uh, we, you know, we always had a food on the table. And someone asked me the other night, well, why do you talk about the schools? Well, let me tell you something. If I'd had a good education, probably, uh, we have the, you know, if I'd had a good education, we here have the superintendents, we have the administrators, we have the principals, we have the teachers, we have the custodians, we have everyone and if I would have had this kind of backup support when I was young uh, I don't know where I would have mounted, what I would have done in life I got something I'm 84 and I still have something to do in life I've got to accomplish something but I, I, I appreciate the school system when I first came to town the, the high school was at the middle school and the, and the fifth sixth seventh and eighth was at uh, was at uh, crossroads and we had we had a couple elementaries but you know we have people, we have teachers that care, and we have people that, 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 are, that, are, uh, that can care, that help. If we do have any kind of mental, mental problems, they, they step in there, and they give a lot of love. Yeah, they do. Yeah. And uh, I guess the only thing I'm saying, when you ask me if I care, why do I care? Well, you care because kids are important. You came out with $24.9 million. You supported the school system. You built a new auxiliary gym. You built a new football stadium that uh, houses uh, band, they do soccer, they do everything else. You care, it's about the kids, and if you don't care about your kids, don't talk about the schools. I happen to care about the kids. I happen to care about the coronavirus. I happen to care when they close down a school, close down a grade. Hey, wait a minute, Pete, wait a minute. Alder Care Bus is out here waiting for you. Okay, they can, they I'll come. they wait two more minutes. I'll make come. this quick. Okay. Just a minute, he'll be right there. Okay. Alder Care Bus, but I'll just tell you something. Why do I talk about the schools? Because I'm so proud, to, I, I never belonged anywhere. I was in uh, 11 I mean, schools. I didn't know that. You yeah, were 11 that schools. schools. And why am I so proud? Why am I, why am I lucky to have been on the school board for 13, 14 Nobody years? Nobody else ran. No one else ran. They, weren't, right. they were didn't want to run. But, you know, it's quite an honor to run. <laughs> it's it quite is. A, Pat, you were a school board Yeah, member. I was. I did a lot and of there's good a lot, there. a lot behind remember. that you can't see. A lot goes on behind the scenes. Eating good sandwiches now. And, and we uh, were eating good sandwiches at yeah. uh, Curry's. Hooked yeah, Curry's. Curry's, yeah. But, you know. Which uh, one do you like the best? I like the big rig. There you go. Thank you. But I can only eat a half. But, Who eats you know, other half? I'm not going to tell you. I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> but, you know, the, the funny thing is I made, I've been here 60 years, and I'm not a townie. But I've been made. I've been Your made to are. feel part of this Your community. Kids My kids are townies, yeah. and I've been made to feel part of this community. I'm so proud to serve on the school board, and I'm pro so proud of our schools and our football fields and our gyms and our our teachers and, and our students. And I'm so proud of this community. So that's why hey, I talk about the schools. Topping off that, proud of the community. 
Uh, we celebrated, uh, I think it was last Saturday, uh, Guy's 88th birthday, Denny Tassoni. Yeah, he great guy. Uh, to touch on great little, guy. I remember he used to have to, yeah. Denny's muffler. You know anybody that doesn't like him? I don't know anybody that doesn't like yeah, him. I don't either. He's a nice guy. Uh, he, he, he's a pretty special guy. He and reminds Sunday. me a lot of my dad. He's a hardworking yeah. guy. Yeah. Uh, got involved with the community. Yeah. Gave back. He was a kind of silent guy out there giving to him. But he was there. Uh, big golfer. Uh, golf every, every week. Every week he goes. But uh, I'll tell you, when he moved to town in 1970, that was a Sunoco station where Denny's Muffler is now. Yep. Right next yep. to Casanova. Yep, yep. Yep. He fit into that group really well. They don't know where Casanova was. Well, it's uh, that's where that's where the uh, uh, Michigan Works is. Yes, right? thank yeah, you. Yeah, right. yeah. Okay. But that's Casanova. They had the best pizza in the state and now. salads. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. salads. But yeah. anyway, Denny fit right in that crowd right there. He had his gas station at that time, and then he turned it into a muffler shop. Got rid of the gas. But that was probably Smart cleaner than the Casanova. Yeah. It was probably cleaner than the Casanova. Yeah, it was clean. That guy, oh, yeah, I'm yeah. telling you, his hoist had no dust yeah, on it, yeah, let alone yeah, grease. Yeah. Uh, the floor, you could eat off it. And, you, and you, people have never been there. Honest to God, going there because David has carried the tradition on. He, he's a great guy, too. He's Denny's son. But Denny hit 88 years old. I didn't ask him how he made it that long because he's not gone yet, and I can see him living to be 100 or whatever. But I think, I think the reason he's, he's uh, lived that long is, is caring. He cared about his family. He cared about his customers. I mean, I never heard a complaint from Denny or Dave. Yep. Those Tassonis. Yep. Uh, what are they, Italian? I don't Sicily? know. Sounds like it would what be. Are they? Italian, anyway, sort of. yeah. um, I, I don't want to uh, sound like i uh overdoing it here, but there's a flag that they should fly in front of their store, and that is we are the best. Because, I mean, if you, if you went in that place, he has quality workmanship. Yeah. Whenever they're done with a the job, they clean the floor, they clean the hoist, they clean the shelves. I, I just, I, I tried to emulate that at, at one time at Curry's, but in the garage. But it was well, just go in the bathrooms. Look how clean your bathrooms. Yeah. Are. Well, no, our, our uh, food your shop, shop is always clean. Yeah, our store is clean. But I mean, in a garage, you people don't realize how hard it is to keep a garage open and clean. And they, they worked as hard on that as they did. Anyway, I'll never forget this. What he brought to town. Back in the day, everybody bought at uh, Napa. Yep. At uh, Benny's Auto. Yep. And uh, they they would sell you mufflers, pipes to fit the car, blah blah blah. Denny came into town. He was the first one I believe had a pipe bender. I was fascinated by it. You go down there. He had straight pipes up on the wall, two inch, one seven eighths, three inch, whatever size you wanted, and he would modify to your car or truck. Or Taylor Yeah, back a few years ago. Uh, David, I called him up. Uh, we had a wrecker that uh, uh, pipe was bad on it, and that pipe was like eight hundred bucks. And I call, I said to Adam, I said, call call Dave, see if he can make us one. He made one for three hundred bucks. Yeah, save me five hundred bucks. And to this day, he still can modify. And you shop local. Yeah, right. But he, he, to this day, he still can make any pipe you want. Unfortunately, they went to stainless steel, which like plastic radiators and aluminum radiators. Uh, the old breed is gone, but he's still there's still a need there. So and they still do brakes and and uh, all kinds of minor repairs out there. You know he takes on uh, a lot of work out there and, and doing a great job. But Denny, going back to him, he he was always honest, you know, and as a lot of Big Rapids merchants were and, and still are. But uh, I remember buying parts from him. You know he wasn't really per se a parts store, but he saw a need of a discount parts store, and that he was probably the first discount parts store that. Uh, actually was a discount part store because you had your wholesale and your retail and you had your jobber. Well, he, he was selling at jobber prices to uh, wholesalers, which was very nice. So he, he did a lot of good in Big Rapids, but he was just a super guy and his wife and his whole family. You know, we benefited from their uh, cause and that's making a living there. But if you ever get a chance, you want to see a, a well-performed business if you ever need oil change or uh, I know we're saying that against Penn's oil here, but uh, he does do all that, and he does break jobs and uh, a lot of muffler work. Zach, what Pat's a little uh, happy, but unhappy about saying that. Well, I'm talking about yeah. Denny Tassoni and yeah. his company, but yeah. I'll let it go at that. I know I talk to him, ramble on. And no, stuff, that's but fine. But I just love those people. Yeah. Dave, Dave's just a great guy, and he's continuing his dad's legacy. And uh, that that I'm trying to do the same, you know. And, and you that's, are. That's what, a son, that's what a son tries to do. And Adam, Adam, he, and Adam and Matt will take over. Yeah, and, David, and, uh, David Rose. has, and and on the golf course, you know, and everything else. So my hat's off to Denny. And hi, Lisa. Hi, old. Lisa. This morning. Yep. Now the other guy I want to talk about is Max Baker. Uh, did you know Max? Yep. 
He worked with, not well, but I knew him. He yeah, worked with well. a lot of guys at Michigan Bell back when Michigan Bell used to employ probably fifty people yep. here in Big Rapids, yep. maybe even more. Right downtown next to yeah, and then across the river, pharmacy. across yeah, the river yeah, too. There yeah, was a maintenance yeah. and Max worked on the lines yeah. and stuff. But I think uh, maybe one other guy still alive. Who's one of the operators that's still alive at? Uh, we used to work at Michigan Bell. Um, Katie Schubert, wasn't it? Didn't she? Oh was yeah, she? back yeah. in the day. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I was talking about back in the day. Oh yeah, yeah. But Max lived out on Mill Pond. And the reason I bring him up too, because he was just one nice, quiet guy. When he come in the station. He, he would say hello with that quaint smile of his, and then he'd listen to everybody. He wouldn't say much, but when he did speak, it was wonderful stories. Yep. And he had the most beautiful place out on Mill Pond Avenue. Mill Pond Road, excuse me, New Mill Pond. If you ever get out there, Bob, mm -hmm. you know New yep. Mill Pond is? Yep. Go all the way out, almost to Garfield. Okay. When you go in that sharp curve, there's a nice little red barn there with a white fence. Okay. That was Max Baker's house. Yeah. Back in I like the day. that stretch in there. Yeah, yeah it's beautiful. Back in the day, that was the most beautiful little farm. What yeah. was his wife's name? Uh, Mrs. Con Baker. No, was it Connie? No. Was it Connie? I don't know. I don't have the old bit here. Was but it, it? beautiful woman, beautiful kids, real nice kids. But they uh, sold that place. They sold that place, I think. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They moved down to Grand Rapids. He, he got, little, you know, I mean, That's 90, who was. I think he was 94 years That's old. That's who it was. Connie Baker. Was yeah. Wife. She had okay. ceramics by Connie, I think. I'm yeah, she did sure. have a ceramic shop. That's down ceramics there. by yeah, Connie. Very yeah. good, yeah. But anyway, I just want to touch yeah. on that. And he was a great guy. Great guy, yeah. Yeah. yeah, and I, I know there's others, too. We should write these down, Pete, we, who we want to talk about. Those well, we just I, go off the cuff path, Pat, and that's kind of... But we, not, should we shouldn't we, do that, because we, we had a lot of birthdays this week, and... Uh, some deaths. Um, Helicopter goes over my house a lot, oh, and I pray to God. One I want to talk about, third. too, is uh, Rachel Federley, a Goldman, uh, young girl, way, way too young to... Pass. Was she Jack Federley, any relation? No, no, Jim Federley. He's my cousin. They lived out there in, uh, I call it the Woodville area. Yep. Out by Sam Ross and the Thebos and uh, Olson's, Greg Olson. Yeah, uh, no, they live on Six Mile, but it doesn't matter. Uh, and she was the youngest. Uh, Rachel, just a wonderful girl, uh, way too young, had a tragic accident down in Tennessee uh, working on a car and jacks or whatever, but... She's passed, and oh, what a loss, man. This girl, she worked up to Ferris with Stan in the food service. Yep. Yep, and then she ended up taking over a spot down, I think, in University of Tennessee, running that okay, food service. Sure. Very knowledgeable young lady, but what, what a loss of life, you know. I mean, that's another question you got to ask the good Lord. Why take her so young? He, he you never know. Kids, that's the fine thing about it. Two you little never kids, know. and uh, you never gosh, know. just I look at my grandkids and think, what would it be like without a... Yeah, parent. Yeah. Oh, my Lord. See, I never knew any of my grandfathers. I knew both I of my grandmothers. I knew uh, Grandpa Kylie. But I never knew any of them. He's the one that taught me to wiggle yeah. my ears, how to wiggle my ears. But I knew I knew my grandmas, and I didn't know my grandpa. About the only thing I can wiggle. I didn't my know ears. my dad. See, that's the thing <laughs> yeah. about it. I had no parental as a uh, father. Yeah, right. I had a stepdad, but uh, yeah. that's all I had in life. Yeah. Well, without discipline, they're no good, but uh, I was lucky I had to discipline my family. My mother disciplined me yeah. in our family. Yeah. She was a disciplinary, just like I kind of think Rose was a disciplinary in your yeah, family. Yeah, she was. My mother just had to look at you. <laughs> Eleanor Spadowski helped her a lot, yeah, too. Yeah. Yeah. You know Eleanor. Yeah, oh, sure. Yeah, she's still alive. Yeah. She came in station the other day, yeah. and uh, we got her gas and washed her car, and car washes were And that's good. another nice thing you go into Curry's. I, I'm old. Yeah. And they, you're they, not they, old, they, but they, you're uh, I'm old. Your ages. But they came, they come, they fill my gas up for me. Nice. Uh, if I ask them to check tires, they would. They do my, they run the car through the car wash. And that's one of the reasons, small town, no other gas station would do that. Admiral wouldn't do that. No one else would do that. But Curry's does that. Yeah, we and do. I'm not trying to say because nope. but see nope. there. appreciate it. That's a nice compliment. But, but he takes well, we try our best, that's yeah. for sure. But, you know, uh, talking about car washes, Adam just recently bought from Kim Wells, a local guy that bought right. from a local guy in the day, uh, bought the self-serve car wash down the alley from us on 3rd Avenue. He's got a couple bays open. He's working on the other two. A lot of uh, things are going to change there. So, uh, so you have the bright and shiny and that, yeah, and both, the one at yeah. the gas station. Yeah, you, 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 have the ga you have the uh, car wash monopoly on the uh, well, <laughs> side um, of town. Well, you know, uh, it's kind of a traditional thing. I, I don't know if you knew this, Bob. You don't know a lot about Big Rapids. I do don't, not But at you're all. learning a lot, right? A little bit, yeah. My dad and Tommy Thompson started the first car wash in Big Rapids. Did you? Yeah. We have two uh, famed things. And guess did. where it was? Guess where it was, Bob? Uh, guess where? Guess where it was down by Wonderland Dairy. <laughs> guess where Wonderland Dairy was? By yeah. like Jack and Emily's. Okay. Or across from uh, uh, Wayland's. Across right. from uh, Bowers. Yeah. Well, it was Wayland's though. Wayland started. And there. that's where I met Pat Curry. He was eight years old. He was trying to yeah, hustle me a car wash. Yeah. 
Yeah. And I wanted to buy him a free ice cream cone. Mm -hmm. That was good. You and he was licking that little devil. He was eight years old, and I was 23. <laughs> yeah, that was, yeah. Good Lord. Is that how old you were then? Yeah, and, and then now oh. he's now what he's doing, he's still feeding me ice cream. <laughs> yeah, right. But anyway, my dad started that with Tommy, and that lasted until uh, Jim's Rapid Wash opened up, and my dad uh, and Tommy were getting so much flack from the city because all the water going out going on State Street. Street yeah. Oh, they were having a hairy yeah, over that. Bowers probably was... And, but, Bowers is probably complaining. Well, no, people are coming out of Jack and Jack Emily's and Emily's too many whiskeys slipping and sliding, slipping and, sliding <laughs> and saying instead of drinking and driving, they were sliding on the ice at Curry. You remember where there. Jack and Emily's was, Bob? No. Oh, okay. No. But they, we did put a lot of water <laughs> on that street. I wish I did. I mean, you know, I, w I wish we, I knew where all these... You knew where the brown bungalow was, didn't you? No. Oh, wow. Okay. See, that's oh. the thing. I mean, uh, you know, you take me back to Riverhead, New York, and I can tell you where yeah. everything... Nelly, you know, Nelly and Bill Every single thing. And, but, you know, but, and, and Big Rap is just like it. I mean, and people remember what... Interrupting that I do. Yeah. You don't care if we go on a little bit, do you, Bob? No. Um, Brown Bungalow was the center place of the knowledge and the communication yep, yep. between guys in this town business. And uh, we could follow up on this on the chamber thing, and there's a group of people in town now, and I commend them for it young people, energized people, unlike Pete and I, uh, that want to start back a chamber. I, I, I don't know if I'd call it a chamber or not, but I would call it a unity club or something. But uh, I, I really commend them for it because I think there is a need for that relationship amongst the businesses that we have do have left. I think people have to get together and explain uh, why they're doing things and what, what uh, innovators get out there. But uh, I, I like the golf outing that they have every year. I think that brings people together, right, yep, Pete? Yep. And the gala in the wintertime, of course, obviously, they're not going to have to holiday in, but they got to find a place. But uh, a lot of good things are going on. So, you know, when it goes all the way down to the bottom, it starts at the bottom and goes back up, and I think that's what's going to happen with these. Do you remember people. where the brown bungalow was? Started oh yeah, up, where? Oh, yeah. first one up on Misiola Road, yep. on the right hand side up. on the south side of the road. It? Who owned it? Um, Bill and Nelly. Bill yeah, and Nelly. Yeah, yeah. They came up and started. I used to go in there on Friday nights with Jack Benedict for dinner. Jack Morita. Yep. Yeah. And uh, Vic Spadoff would be in the back and yell, "Hey, you know!" But we'd yeah. have a lot of fun. It was yeah. a good group, and you Gathering couldn't even get place. in there. Yeah, yeah. Tommy Thompson wound up buying it at one time. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep, and, uh, that was a lot of fun. Johnny Switch. But I just did want to say we are <clears throat> B1039 WBZX and Big Rap is all new number one in 80s and more. Right. Yeah, I like 50s good. and 60s. Yeah, music. you do. But 80s and more, we are number one. Bob tries. He yeah. sang a little Elvis Presley for us. Oh, other <laughs> songs. But that's in Big Rapids, yep. and, uh, and yes, I just want to shout out. And I want to shout out one more time to about our sponsors, Please and do. I'm, I'm going to do it. Normal voice. Okay. I'm going to do a normal voice. Bab Ford. Yeah. Okay. Seth Winger. Okay. Mm -hmm. Big Rapids Pennzoil. And Zotz, Roxanne. Mm -hmm. And you want to go over and see B -B -B Bob Horn the third, and you want to go see S -S -S Seth Winger. <laughs> yeah. You want to go see Z Roxanne. And you want to go see the Z -Z Zach Man. Yeah. Quick oil change. Yeah. You go over to Zotz and have one. They have a breakfast sandwich, you know. You know, it's they nice. Did, I didn't know good. that. Yeah, they have egg, yeah, bacon, egg, and cheese. I didn't know that. And they don't have breakfast, but they have a breakfast sandwich, I did not which know is that. really good. Yeah. Reminds us of back home. Yep, I yep. didn't know that. Yeah. I don't go into bars, though. I don't go into bars. I go in there for the Holly Burger. I don't drink. I'm not a pig. Yeah, no, I don't. My kids I have iced tea. You know, uh, I have a, I have a Holly Burger. Go you ahead. know what's nice about Pennzoil, too, is, Zach, they have a quick yep. uh, oil change. Uh, guys standing right there ready to go. So if you want to go get one, go in there right now and get in line, go. And I appreciate it. They, they, uh, the change unique my service that they provide. Yeah. Not only changing your oil and checking all your fluids, tires, right. top them they, off. They, you can drive in and get the tires checked, okay, and I love that. Yep. Yeah, no, I, I, no, I'm, I'm going to go on for right now. Free, free, free car <laughs> But they'll top off everything <laughs> yep. in between your for, And they will do that for free, by the way. Right. They don't right. charge you. Nope. And they vacuum my car out mm -hmm. for free. I they would. check my tires for free. They do everything not for free. Yeah. But, but anyway, if they good. see a windshield wipers, yep. they put on a really bulky set of windshield wipers. Well, they can't, they, they, don't, they can't do the Mercedes. The only one uh, place you can get that done is in the Mercedes. Yeah, yeah. You know. Oh, you rich people. No, not rich. Right. Just uh, Well, anyway, the nice thing, the neat thing about their oil change place is, too, when you're getting it done, they check the car over for a bad fan belt. Nothing worse than being standard fluid with the fan belt blowing high on the highway. We pick up more cars. Yeah. Because if somebody didn't check the car before they went on the trip. Yep. 
and that leads me to maintenance. Mm -hmm. So they'll look your car over real well, see if you need tires. They sell tires there. They can put tires on it for you. They look at your shocks. If they're bleeding, they can fix the bleeding. They can just do so many things underneath that But rack. you know that why they, what this all started? Self-service gas stations. Because you used to be yeah. able to go into Curry's. Ding, ding, ding. Curry would be able to check. You would be we able do. to check every. I know. But not any other station. You need a ding, no. ding. No. no. I missed the ding, that, ding. That's the worst thing. The worst thing happened is self-serve. That's right. Throughout New Jersey, that's right. it's awful. That's right. So, yep. I agree. I've never People, checked my oil. Thank God that the engineers have produced a better motor in these cars, engines, and better oil. Synthetic oil lasts a lot longer. Back just five, six years ago when people were using regular oil, they would be down three or four quarts, and it was sad because you'd have a brand new car, you're towing a brand new car in because she didn't check the oil or he didn't check yep. the oil and ran it out of oil. Oh, my hey, God. Hey, I want to ask you a quick question because we got to get off the air pretty quick, but who do you think is going to win the Super Bowl? I'm a Stafford fan. I just hope the well, Rams take care of uh, Cincinnati, and I, I kind of think they might. But uh, cause they got the home field, field advantage. Home field advantage. <laughs> they're, a, I think, a three and a half point favorite. Yep. Are they? But yeah, I think Rams so. are. I think so. I oh think so. I'm Lord. not. I'm I don't not know. For sure. Cincinnati's defense I'm is not, pretty good. I know, but I'm so going to give it to Cincinnati. Okay. I, I'd rather so have the Rams should, win. It. Should we have a little coffee bet? How about a cup of coffee? Coffee here? bet. <laughs> coffee bet. <laughs> it'd be worth me to lose the coffee if Rams win because Stafford. I think he has more. I like people, Stafford. People root for him from Michigan. They does California. You're right. You're right. Class act. Yep, Class yes. act. Well, they're all, he gave all a lot, quarterbacks he, are. He gave a lot, lot to Detroit. He gave a lot to the state of Michigan. That new quarterback for Cincinnati, though, he's an upcoming here. Two though, years old. He's been. Wow. In, I mean, he's been in there two years. Wow. He, the record was like two and fourteen when he went in. Yeah. Now they turn it around. He's winning the Super yeah. Bowl two years. Well, you later. know what? They deserved it. Unbelievable that they could beat Kansas Patrick City. Mahone, going, Patrick Mahomes. Yeah, I couldn't yeah, believe Mahomes got bit. beat. Yeah. Well, that's because that defense. They, they yeah, were really yeah. going. That defense no, was because Patrick their back. Mahomes threw a beautiful ball down. The guy had it in his hands. He let it slip out. It went into another guy's hands. He just hauled him open. He caught it. I know. And they yeah. kicked a the field goal. I saw it. Yeah. I was at the Red, red Anchor yeah. on Sunday night. I was at Big Rapids. I, I support the Big Took Rapids. Took the Vogue out, yeah. Greg yeah. and Chris. First time they've been out in four months. And, well, he had that quadruple Back bypass. Back before November was the last time he had a Quadruple beer. bypass, yeah. yeah. So I took him. That's and hard Chris on you, Benny and I went to... Uh, Jimmy's Anchor Roadhouse. In, in the you ever been to Jimmy's no, Roadhouse? No. Over on uh, I try to 37. eat in Big Rapids. They're patriotic. You know who they are, Bob? Uh, where is it? I'm, and, uh, on Luego? Uh, 37 South 82. Yeah, we've been there. They, we went there when they were when everything was locked down, and yeah. he said, hell no. Yeah. And we went over there and supported him. How he, far south on 82? One block on the left. Uh, yeah, have you we, never been there? I've never been there. We talked to him you for a long time. Good guy. You should uh, take And you're right about it. Yeah, he's, 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 he's patriotic. Yeah. Right. Yeah, he's yep. Ameri- he might yeah. not live long, but he's American. Yeah. Yep. But anyway, we went there, and then because it was a Sunday, and then we went to Red Anchor and on the way through and saw some old friends there that knew Fred Benedict. Yep, yep. Yep, that's why I stopped here in memory. And I, I think our stock club did well this month. That We Good. started a stock club in Big Rabbit's. Oh, it's all about money, money, money. Curry's money, one of the money. members. He's one of the members. Okay. Yep. And, uh, I guess I'm going to have to buy into this thing. I don't yeah, know. you might. Well, I don't know if we can take you. We only allow 20 people. Oh, all right. 16. Well, yeah, whatever. <laughs> but hey. John, Dem, Jen, and Dom are members. Yeah, see? Both of them. So let them in. Make, let, give them all. Okay, do you want us to get off the air? No, I'm uh, fine. <laughs> I have nowhere to go. Well, anyway, uh, my, uh, I want to end up saying this. Be nice. You know, I can't believe the people in Big Rapids, as great as we are, we probably are the greatest city. If you look at our schools, our businesses, churches, hospitals, it's just a great. And then yet we have people that are envious and jealous and yep. deceitful. Yep. And and you're if you're listening out there, I have one thing to say to you. I have nobody I dislike in this town. I don't either. Some disappoint me once in a while. I don't have anybody I disappoint a lot of people. But I got one thing to say to them. Work hard. If they truly say this prayer every day, they'll be a better person for it. You know what prayer that is, Bob? Our Father, award in heaven. Okay. If they say that prayer every day and believe in what they're saying, forgive those. Yep. Right? Yep. I agree. Say those words real slow. Yep. You'll smile at that guy that you don't like. Because yep. you're the one that's got to step in and forgive and forget what that person's done to you. In a small I town, to that it's hard in a small town. Well, it, it doesn't take a lot of work. It's harder to hate someone than to love someone. No, I'm just saying, like, if I wanted to get gas, just say at another yeah. gas station. Well, then you'd never it be talking. Hard. I'd never talk to yeah, you see, in the restaurant. There you, there you go. Hate your see, there you go. And now, see, that's what he was just saying. No, I say would, that I prayer. Not. Say you know that what? prayer. You know, like, I, 
Honest to God, I can't. Go ahead, Pete. Start out. Our father. Six yeah. years yeah. I've been getting gas at Curry's. I don't go anywhere else. One of my best friends in my lifetime. <laughs> I never see him in the store unless he comes to Big Rap. I don't, don't even know if he drives anymore. Don't no, mention Les Ellison. From Stanwood. Really? Love the guy. But he, he Stanwood, why would he come to Kurt? Well, he, he, when he yeah. was working in town, he'd stop in the store. I loved him. You know why, Bob? Why? Because he was always upbeat to me. Mm -hmm. You know what? He always was upbeat. And, went, and define upbeat. Smile. Good story. Yeah. Just love life. Friendly. Didn't matter if he had a dime or a dollar. Yeah. He'd give it to you if you needed it. That guy I want to emulate because, you know, what I really, and he had stories. I should have him on the radio Would someday. you give me a dollar, by the way? I need I a dollar. <laughs> but Les Ellison, <laughs> I'm telling you. gas for the car. I charged you, for two weeks. He, I lost my credit card. No, a lot of older guys would on. never speak to a young guy because you're young. And I, know, I, know, I, I never spoke Les to you. Was, Les was always good to I us. I never spoke and to you when you were a kid. He's old. He's old. He's you were a wild young man. But anyway, be like a Les Ellison. Good guy. Yep. But anyway, if you see, read that, <laughs> say that prayer, yep. you'll be I better. Agree. Good God, when you see me and you look me in the eye and can't speak, are you kidding me? Well, you know something? When I was young, I was very, very bashful. Seriously. I, was, I didn't want to talk to anybody. I was <laughs> I very, very, very that. bashful. Well, that changed. Yeah, I, my sure stepdad did. was a salesman and, one, and an oil field supply. Right. And one thing he always said is, Pete, he said, when you meet a guy... Grab hold of their hand, grab it firm, look them in the eye. Put your index finger up against his palm. Look them in the eye and, and say, hey, it's real nice to meet you, and remember that name. <laughs> remember that name. Yep. And so I have no fear of speaking in front of which I did 300 people right. traveling right. the world. I was a motivational speaker, uh, tr sales trainer, and I'd go to Australia, New Zealand, England. I'd go all over. And I never had a fear of getting on stage and no. talking to people. I never had, because my stepfather said, look them in the eye. Shake their hand and say, "Hey, it's great meeting you." And I always speak to people. You know, he didn't say he imagined them with their clothes off. No, That's he didn't. A, okay. no, no, I don't. How come, though, no, Pete, when you shake a? Um uh, funeral home director's hand. Because that's why he shook my hand. He felt the blood pulse. The pulse. Yeah, they always put their <laughs> hand on finger your pulse. Up against your pulse. Oh, yeah. do they? Have? Yeah, yeah. yeah. knows that, Bob? Yeah. Making sure yeah. that you're still... look at you, and that, depending, <laughs> that depends how you long you're going to get Mike Monk in here to prove that. that yeah. I think. Yeah. <laughs> Ron Monk did it to me, and so does Mike. Oh, Aaron I Rogers know. It. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what? They'd always When he always saw me, Ron Monk, he was born the same year I was, 37. But he'd go rubbing his hands together. He wouldn't speak to the young guys. Hey, Hey, Pete, how yeah, you doing, yeah. buddy? Uh, and Mike uh, does the same thing. He always funny. doesn't speak to the young guys. He always speaks to his old guys. Yeah. I always found uh, funeral directors had the best jokes. Oh, they really they do. do. Oh, I mean, they, they, do. You know, they, they have do. to. They have to. Yeah, they do. You know, yeah. they have to deal well, with that every I can never remember a joke. I'll never remember. forget uh, this guy was laying in the casket. and He, he was older, of course, but yeah. how old? Back in the day, he might have only been 60, but um, Harry Rogers, uh, which I just loved Harry Rogers. He's he another one of those pillars of the community. Yeah. And he had a dry sense of humor, yep, didn't he? he did. Yeah. And we were standing there, and I was looking at the casket, and me memories floated through my head about the guy and stuff. And this other fella comes up, and he stood next to Harry. And he said, Harry, how'd he die? Harry looked at him and goes, his heart quit. <laughs> <laughs> That's usually what happens. Yeah, when Harry used to have starch white Pretty collars, much. starch white detachable oh, yeah. white starch collars. By the way, this just cleared. Tom, oh, Tom Brady has announced it for time. Oh, good. Yeah. I hate that. I hate that. <laughs> well, anyway, go back. Go. Getting yeah. back one more time on Cincinnati playing L.A. Okay. We got a coffee. I back. think Cincinnati will win because of their defense and that new quarterback. He doesn't yeah. miss. Joe. If he's on like Joe. he is against Kansas City, yeah. Kansas City was overwhelming the favorite yeah. to win. Super he's Bowl, never right? lost a playoff game, by the way. Pardon? He's never lost a playoff game from college on the we'll, really? we'll see we'll see what the benefit of a two billion dollar stadium yeah. has in, is that in all the home field yeah, i thought it was more than that i might have yeah, been where are they playing at they're playing in, in la, in LA in, Los in, 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 on the rams home field oh they are yeah, yeah. Oh, so, my Lord. so Magic there you go Johnson. i'm really into all it all the stars will be there <laughs> yeah, oh, you're into they're it. playing not this week right to, no, the week after. Two weeks, yeah. yeah. But I think, I, I, you know, I don't think the Rams will win it. I really don't. I, I hope they do for Stafford's sake. But, boy, that Cincinnati, they, they got a heck of a defense. Defense coverage is great. And, what, do you, what do you think? What do you think? Uh, Chop liver, L.A. is chopped liver? No, no, no. I think Stafford would be okay in there. I think they're, they're they got a up great a offensive line. They got a great they, offensive line. Uh, well, that's going to be the tail of the yeah. towel, yeah, yeah because. Uh, he, they give Stafford time, he'll pick it. Pick you apart. Yeah. You pick you well, apart. that other guy will. And too. that's what they always said in Detroit. It was Stafford. The quarterback wasn't any good. Right. The rest of the team was. Well, maybe Stafford's proven them wrong. Right. He's oh, in the Super Bowl and Detroit's not. 
And okay. I, my favorite team is the Detroit Lions, by the way. It is? Oh, I'm a Detroit Lions. You're Lion dumb. Yeah. I know it. But anyway. Well, you know, wait till next year. Right? Okay. We are, we are off. We are going off the air. Right? Yeah, pretty close. But anyway, Bob, who's your favorite team just for shits and giggles? Uh, K- oh, City? I'm sorry. Kansas oh, like City. they don't hear that on TV. And the kids are in school well, right yeah, now. Anyway. But, you know, we don't I'm talk like that. I'm not supposed to let that on the air. We don't talk like Shoots that. and giggles. No. Thank you. Shoots and he, giggles. He said that. He said shoots, but I still pushed him yeah. up. Uh, yeah, good. Um, I don't really, you know, I guess the Detroit Lions, but you know what? My favorite football team is the Ferris State Bulldogs. I'm sorry. We have the best team in the nation right down the street in their division. My favorite okay, football so team is the no Big doubt. Rapids High School. Okay, there you go. So there, and yeah. the coach wow. does a heck of yeah, a job. We love them, too. Yep. But, I mean, Ferris State, they won the national yep. championship. I, I mean, the basketball I team did yep. a couple of years ago. So, division you know what? Two, yep. you got to love Ferris. I mean, you know, for for, yep. state, for a school way out in the woods is uh, we people in Detroit. We were talking, hey, you know? hey, hey, we're only 50 miles from Grand uh, Rapids. Yeah, but that's way out. That's yeah, Siberia to these people. So, we were talking pros, though, Bob. we got a Myers here. Who's your favorite pro? Oh, we have a good one. Who's your favorite pro team? Uh, pro team. I, uh, it, I used to like the Jets, yep. you know, back in the Joe Namath Joe days. Namath day, yeah. Yeah. I mean, now he's selling uh, shoes. Medicaid yeah. Part D or whatever. Yeah, I, 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 uh, I, I, uh, before we uh, end up here, too, it's I just free! Wanna... <laughs> yeah, okay, shut Bob, up. Put the, put the weed down, Bob. Yeah, no, no, it's the coffee. All right. But anyway, uh, Fred would, Gunter, weed would man, mellow me out. The mayor's doing better. Yeah. You heard what happened to him, right? No, it happened. Well, he's doing a great job with the city. I tell you, isn't he, Pete? Yep. He is. He's going to make things happen. Yep. Good deal. Yep. yep. But anyway, um, he fell, uh, misfortune there, at his house on the ice Ooh. and uh, cracked a rib, he ah, thought. Ow, ow, ow. And uh, little did he know, his, uh, somehow punctured his lung. Punctured Ooh. his lung? Yeah. Did you know that, Pete? No. Yeah. And, and he ended up in Grand Rapids, but uh, he's he's on the men's now, and our thoughts and prayers yeah. are Thoughts for and Fred. prayers for Fred. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. But, you know, we... He's not the type of guy to get on the phone. Hey, guys, I'm in Grand Rapids. Hell, nobody knew about it. And uh, I, I found out through him yesterday. Through the grapevine. Well, through him. I yeah. talked to him on the phone, and uh, he's a tough old football player, you yeah. know. So he thought, you know, crack rib just He was a lot, uh, one of the best linebackers. I think it was linebackers. They of all time? North. Yeah, he was Probably. good. He was good. Yeah. You'd never know that about Fred. Soft-spoken. But uh, now, I want people to try to emulate him. You know what? In what way? How? Huh? How? Get involved. Mm-hmm. He got involved because he saw a need. The Rapids need a right. direction. After we talked him into yeah, well, it. Yeah. What well, does it matter? He saw On the radio, the need. you got to pressure I'll tell you him. what, he's a doctor, gynecologist. What a great livelihood. He's done a good job, yep. made good money as a doctor. He didn't need to do this. Why did he do it? He's got grandchildren that are raised here. He's got a daughter that's a business person. He's got a son-in-law that's trying to get something going in Hemlock Park, which we'll probably see happen. Yep. But anyway, he, he wanted he wanted to help all these people. He didn't have to do it for himself. Fred could yeah. sit at his house and go fishing, smoke some weed out back if he wanted to, or <laughs> drink some beer or whatever. That, I know he don't <laughs> yeah. smoke weed. I'm just saying that yeah, it's no, legal no. now, and everybody else promoting sure. the damn thing. You never hear anybody. Yeah, I was coming up 131 the other day, and, and I could yeah. smell so the car ahead of me. I was a quarter mile back, and I could smell the, oh, yeah. Yeah, the gun well, you know, coming down. The thing that gets me is they're, trying, they're fighting over this ordinance of curb sales at the curb. Well, if we can do that for that, why can't we do it for beer and wine? Yeah, right. Thanks, well, there you Pete. Go. That was real nice. Oh, oh God. But I, anyway, just spilled coffee oh, all over boy. my new hat that Adam oh, got boy. me. He's pretty good at that. Cover for a second here. But, Pat, well, yeah. Okay. Anyway, uh, so getting back, Pete just spilled my coffee all over my hat. But in the... in the. Office. Hey, I know the dry cleaners you can go to, buddy. There you go. But anyway... Uh, Young people like Chris Vanix, we got Joe Van Coolen, we got an Adam Curry out there, we got Shane Strickler out there. We got just a lot of young Nick people. Nick Cricky. Yeah, yep, Nick Cricky. But anyway, uh, get involved. Fred did, and he's 68 years old, <laughs> and he's doing it for you out there. So uh, if you're out there listening this morning and you're young and, and you uh, – think you can help, which I know you can, and we might have differences, but I'll respect those differences, so get on board. There's all kinds of boards. There's a county commission. There's a city commission. There's a school board. I am involved. I'm getting people involved. But anyway, we need young minds. We need young minds, so if you know any, please give us a call. 
And if you do what we say, you'll get in there. He's cleaning and talking at the same time. This is quite a, this is quite a feat here. If you do what we say, you'll get in there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah right. <laughs> well, right. You, you need Pete as the campaign manager. Yeah. And, and, and Pat here will uh, back you up and come on the radio and talk well, about it. You know, just like I said, this new group that's starting to. I'm running for the city back, limits, I know that. we got some great young people and they're getting involved. Yeah. Why? Because they see a need. Yep. And uh, if you're happy, Thank you for with, doing that, if you're way. happy with everything, one, that one guy is sharp as Shane Strickler, yeah. and he should get involved. Oh, that sharp, he man. is that sharp. He's tough, I know that. <laughs> Take care of him, uh, Shane. He used to clean bars out back in the day. There you go. That's it. He probably that's still can do. No, Shane's a great guy. His wife's even better. <laughs> But anyway, Bob, we're going to let you go. Play my favorite song, will you? Well, I got, I got one here. I don't know your favorite what one. What is it? What other? America the Beautiful. Great That's song. not bad. How about okay. Return to Sender? I no, that not well. Return to Sender. What time, what time for a We'll return you yeah. at your funeral. I'm going to play that song during the whole funeral. <laughs> match. Hold on. Let me see. I don't know if I have the Thanks, thing. Bob. Thanks, for uh, Thanks, Bob. Thanks, Bob. Uh, God love America. Uh, okay. Yep. We'll do that. It's B1039, and it is the Pat and Pete Show.